What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I am in my house at home. Very different kind of a video. As you guys normally know, we do these videos when we're at the dealership, going over these cool cars, but we have something that is very, very different that we want to show you and go over with you today. And that's the reason we're doing this live video. Uh, I want to take this as an opportunity to say thank you. Uh, thank you to all 100,000 of you, uh, 104,000 of you guys that follow our channel. Uh, thank you for every single person who has ever, Ryan S., Ryan Clayton, uh, Clayton, great to have you guys on the live feed. Uh, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done. Uh, for a little bit of a backstory, a lot of people don't know this, but Town & Country TV started uh, over a decade ago. Uh, you need to kind of go back and watch some of the earlier videos because they're absolutely terrible. Um, but uh, we started over a decade ago just out of my love, out of trucks, and Josh's, uh, Josh Vandenberg, as you know, he is the guy behind the scenes that's making me look a lot better than I normally am. Um, just thank you to every single one of you guys that have supported us in the dealership. Um, but uh, we, we started that channel, oh gosh, like I said, right at 10 years ago. Um, that Our channel has had uh, up to 2,000 videos at one point. Uh, on our channel. We've removed a lot of those because we just weren't happy with the quality after the fact. Um, but uh, what we realized is that there are a lot of people out in this community that really love cars and trucks. And, you know, we specifically stay with Ford, not because, you know, we are fanboys, even though we are, but it's just real simple that we're around them every day. Uh, and we like that product because that's what we do. Um, and next thing you know, we've got a, a huge following of people that have had over, I think it's like over 40 million video views on our YouTube channel. So never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that we would be here today. And so I wanted to do something a little different, a little more intimate um, with you guys. Um, and Steve looks, hey, love my 2.7 F-150. Jack Hammer, uh, hey guys, keep the feeds going. I'm gonna try and read a couple of these um, here in just a few minutes. So if you're on the live broadcast, um, uh, if you will, just make sure to stay on and put some questions up there. Um, and my whole goal would be to maybe have a little Q&A after the fact. But um, this is, uh, and Jordan, this is a live video, so I don't have the ability to hit up that uh, Amazon gift card, but I can promise you the very next video, uh, which we're gonna be cutting tomorrow on a beautiful F-250 that we put some fuel wheels on it. I don't wanna spell too much or spoil it too much, um, but uh, this vi particular video is for you guys. And, um, and I know this really sounds weird, but um, I, I love the community that we have here. And that's very weird to say because most of the people haven't had a, had the pleasure of meeting you yet. But I almost feel like between every single one of those comments, because I do my best to read every single one of the comments that you guys post. And that's a fact um, that um, I, I just wanted to say thank you for the engagement. Thank you for um, interacting us. And uh, Sergio, thank you. He said, nice house. Thank you. I had nothing to do with decorating it. I have a really good wife. <laughs> Uh, but um, the, the, the only reason that this channel is successful is not because Mitchell Watts or, or because Josh Vanderberg or even the dealership, the wonderful people at the dealership that we, we work with. It is truly because we have found a community of people that love trucks that at the end of the day, that's all it's about. And yes, we have a lot of people that travel because of the YouTube channel to buy trucks from us, but that's never been our intention. Our only intention has been to it's been to just give back and to talk about a community. Um, and uh, speaking of talking, I'm looking at the thing. I've been here four minutes already and haven't even shown you what the stupid video is about. So without further ado, I'm going to flip this camera around and show you why I am so excited to have this live broadcast so late in the afternoon. All right, and so this is it. It dropped in the mail today. As you can see, it is still sealed. We have not had a chance to open it up. Um... Yeah, it's just crazy. Ten years ago. So we've got, uh, I hope the wife doesn't realize I'm using the steak knife, but uh, <laughs> she'll get over it. So let's try and do this with one hand. All right, let's do the other side as well. Man, they package this thing up with a lot of tape. All right, let's see how all this thing is supposed to open. All right, so unpack it, or, you know, cutting live with one hand. It's a little more difficult than you probably think it is. <laughs> 
All right, so let's flip it on this side and let's cut this thing open. All right, I think, I think we almost got it. And actually cutting it to where you guys can see it and me not trying to cut my hand off. There we go. And I guess this is why most of these unboxings of these videos are primarily done. All right. And here is the foam. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's look at this first. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to have, honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want to experience your exceptional, uh, want your experience to be exceptional. Apparently, I can't read. Y'all just found that out today. <laughs> uh, this award was inspected and packaged with uh, great care by Rick. If your award was damaged, no, no worries. I don't think you'll have any worries there. All right, so let's take a look at this. Oh, wow, that's like a serious paper. That's not like paper. That's like cardstock paper. All right. From YouTube, you've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. We know that the number, uh, that numbers on YouTube can get really big, but we hope that you don't lose sight of the reality behind that six digit milestone. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. They were inspired, challenged, or entertained. You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably uh, a healthy sense of humor too. What you've accomplished can be taken, cannot be taken from you. And we'd like to recognize you and all your hard work in this Silver Creator Award, a small token of our esteem and respect. We know that you don't do this for awards. You do it because you have a drive to create, share, and because you've found an audience who cares. Believe us when we say we can't wait to see what you do next. A million subscribers may seem like a long way off, but you're closer than you think, and we're rooting for you. Congratulations, the CEO of YouTube. Pretty cool stuff. All right, and there she is. Let's pull this thing out and try not to drop it. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, it's definitely tied up in the plastic, so let's see if we can open this thing up. I almost dropped it right there. How awesome would that have been? <laughs> Let's try it. Once again, this is a little difficult doing this with one hand. All right. Man, this is the uh, newer... Um, see if I can shake it off. <laughs> and... There you go. So let's see if we can get some halfway decent light here. All right. So once again, I apologize. It's not easy doing this with one hand. Uh, but as you can see, presented to Town & Country TV for passing 100,000 subscribers. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's uh, I know this is going to sound really sissy, but um, this is just a little emotional because I've got 10 years worth of, of work um, that I've been thinking about this plaque for a long, long time. And I know Josh Vandenberg has too because, good gracious, he's the one that has to sit there and edit my voice and edit my video all the time. And I, feel, I really, I feel bad for the poor guy. Uh, <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I just wanted to say thank you because you are one of those 100,000 subscribers. And I just want to say from the, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for um, what you guys do. Thank you for, um, you know, subscribing. Thank you for, you know, turning the notification bells on. Thank you for commenting. Um, and for a lot of those people, thank you for actually driving um, long, long distances to, uh, to buy a car from us, man. We just appreciate it. Uh, but I love this thing. I mean, it's really, really nice. It's kind of got like a, a brushed metal look to it. I'm going to see if I can set this down. I don't know how well that's going to come out over on video, but it is a very, very well put together award. And this is the newer version of them too. Uh, the awards have actually got a, um, have changed but uh, very, very, very cool stuff, guys. Um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for, for everything you guys have done. Um, so with that being said, I, I promised you a little bit earlier in the video uh, a Q&A session. So uh, I'm going to um, start paying a whole lot of attention uh, to the comments as they're coming in. Uh, so if you will hit us up in that chat, I'm going to try and do everything I can to um, uh, 
to answer those questions. And um, wow. Uh, Sergio, I did drive 11 hours to get a Ford. Hope the construction gets done soon. We do too, man. Uh, it is crazy. We're probably going to update it a little bit more in our next YouTube video. Um, and uh, yes, Nicholas wrote giveaways. Yes, we've got a lot of, um, a lot of uh, planned activities for some giveaways. Uh, we plan on continuing those Amazon gift cards. Jared Heitch, awesome job and content, well-deserved. Jared, thank you, bud. Appreciate it very, very much, man. Appreciate the friendship there, too. Um, but uh, yeah, New Explorer have adjustable pedals? Yes, they will. Uh, Nicholas in Tuscaloosa, that's what I'm talking about. Thoughts on trading? Oh, man, it's reading so fast, I can't, I can't catch up with it. Thoughts on trading in a truck before paying it off versus when you have the title? Better to wait. So uh, Roberto asked that. So the answer to that question is, uh, that's kind of a loaded question. It's more about the miles of the vehicle and the condition of the vehicle instead of um, whether you have the title or not. Uh, what you owe on the vehicle does not actually adjust what the vehicle is worth, if that makes any sense. Uh, Alexander says, uh, I have been driving Forge for years. It's been an awesome experience. I wish you guys, wish you could buy, wish I could buy a car from you guys. Well, Alexander, we wish you could buy a car from us too, but at the end of the day, um, thank you for being on our channel. Uh, it doesn't exclude you from being a part of this community, and I appreciate that. Uh, you Are Breathing wrote, what is the farthest distance someone drove and flew to get a vehicle from you? Uh, we actually um, had one vehicle that was delivered to Sydney, Australia, uh, but the further someone drove, we had a good customer of ours uh, that uh, drove all the way, I think it was Oh gosh, I think he said it was 18 hours one way, one way to get a vehicle. And I'm going to end up butchering the state, but in Nebraska, uh, somewhere is long, long, long ways away. So yeah, there you go. Um, let's see here. Logan uh, from South Carolina. Congrats. I have an F-350. That's awesome. D Built Diesel Mafia, dude. Um, I have seen you all up over our channel. We appreciate everything that you do on our Instagram as well. Sure, I, built, built Diesel Mafia. I'm not. I just appreciate you being a part of our of our uh, community. Uh, Seth Cannon wrote, Raptor review, please. Uh, not a problem. We can we'll definitely do that. We've got a couple of things coming um, with, uh, with some Raptors here soon, so make sure that you're subscribed. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's absolutely. Uh, so Alex wrote, will the Ford Bronco be like the new Chevy Trailblazer? Uh, and good evening from Ohio. It's 11 p.m. Thank you for uh, being in on this video at 11 p.m. I'm, I, sometimes I forget that there's time people uh, ahead of us on time. Uh, so uh, to, to answer your question, no, I don't. It's not going to be like the Trailblazer. It's going to be like the Jeep Wrangler. It'll be a two-door, four-door Jeep Wrangler. Um, uh, it'll be on the Ranger frame. Um, and, uh, I, I think it'll be fantastic. I have a couple of dealer buddies that is on the product committee that's seen it and they said it's phenomenal. Um, all right, let's see if we can take a look at some of these other uh, questions. Will Black Widow do anything with the new Explorer? Probably not, but if there was enough demand, they would definitely do that. Most people that are lifting their trucks, they want to stay, um, on the side of, um, uh, on pickup trucks, but uh, who knows? Hint, hint. Maybe Roush Performance will be doing something with the new Explorer and Expedition. Hint, hint. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Wrench Day two forty seven. Roush Bronco is what he's asking. Um, and uh, just wait. You, you will have one coming. I don't have any inside information. Maybe I do, but um, you, you will be, I will be absolutely floored if you do not have a Roush Bronco. And the Roush Ranger already exists overseas, just not in Alabama. Uh, Bobby Coleman, uh, I saw him. Uh, he said, if my wife has anything to do with it, we will lift and explore. Uh, Bobby Coleman, as you know, has also been a huge part of our channel. Um, if you don't know, uh, Bobby Coleman is our Roush, uh, not Roush, right? Oh, he's going to shoot me tomorrow when he sees this video. Uh, he is our Southern Comfort Performance rep. And, um, and I would argue he is a very, very good friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, uh, not just in, um, not just in business, but actually outside of that as well. But, um, yeah, he is, uh, he's a phenomenal guy. He, the number of times he's put himself out of his way to help us with a video or to help us get product before everybody else does for the channel. Uh, dude, Bobby, we love you. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have done for us. Uh, so, um, 
Let's see here. Uh, Brendan wrote, uh, oh, this is going so fast. Uh, when when did you expect the Bronco to be available for the public to see? And hello from Canada. So this is the biggest thing. I am, Brendan, I'm already frustrated that they have not announced uh, what it's going to look like in person. And I think that they are, at this point, it's already been finalized. They are just simply out there just to tease us. It, is what it boils down to. Um, they are simply out there to tease us and to build hype. Uh, that's honestly what I believe it's for. Um, I'm thinking you'll see a, a, a reveal within the next three to six months is my guess. Uh, so let's see what else we got. Uh, so John Quill wrote, uh, congrats on the 100,000. Do you think there's a chance they'll put a 7.3 variant in the Raptor? Just an opinion is cool. So I think that um, the 7.3 would be phenomenal in a Raptor. Um, I don't think that it would be the most powerful engine because I think it'll be nose heavy. Uh, but I think that so many people would demand it that I think that Ford would actually put it into play. I honestly, honestly do. Um, so there, we know for a fact that it's going to fit. Uh, and if nothing else, you know that people probably like Hennessy performance, uh, they'll probably uh, be adding that 7.3 liter. And uh, I don't know, I think that the demand was there um, on the first generation Raptor, uh, for the V8. And then when the second generation V, uh, Raptor came out and just the EcoBoost, I think Ford listens to their customers. And I think that they will actually give us an option to maybe do a downgrade or whatever the situation is there. Uh, so great questions. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Steven, uh, excuse me, Steve Huck wrote, uh, being a real estate broker in Mississippi, the F-150 is a perfect truck for me. After all, I can put my family in the back seat. That's the same thing that I do with my F-150. Um, so if you guys have any other questions for uh, for me, uh, it doesn't even have to be about product. If it wants to be about me personally, the dealership, um, vehicles coming out. Uh, but once again, just a huge thank you to you guys for these 100,000 subscribers. That's just it's bonkers. Oh, there I am. <laughs> All right. So Juan says, uh, what is your opinion on the 2020 F-150 redesign? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that because I've, uh, I've wanted to make a video on that, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So the 2020 F-150 is going to be available as a, um, as a hybrid powertrain. And if you pay close attention to Ford, They've even announced, uh, I think it was Jim Farley slipped up and said that they're going to offer a fully electric F-150, uh, which I don't think that's going to be a 2020 model, but it will be out. Um, so the, the, the 2020, I'm excited for it to be a hybrid option because uh, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I do know that you're going to have a hybrid option. And at first I was like, well, that's kind of stupid to have a hybrid in an F-150. I want a big V8. Well, their thought process is not necessarily for fuel economy. It's not to have a fuel efficient F-150, although that is a side benefit. But the main reason to have the hybrid powertrain is because it comes with a big battery pack and it also comes with a generator. And so if you're working out of your truck, you now have access to, to a lot of electricity to power your entire job site, which right now it's not feasible to do that much power out of the small inverter that's in a normal F-150. So that's a, it's a great, great question. Uh, so do I think Chevy is knocking off Ford's design? Jonathan Palmer wrote, um, I, I don't think that they're knocking off Ford's design. Um, I think that Chevrolet is getting so ballsy, uh, forgive me for wording it that way, but I think they're getting so ballsy in their design language because they're tired of getting beat. And I think what has happened is they got so aggressive with the design language that it ended up with, um, you know, a Chevrolet that has got some very strange front end uh, cues to it. And like I said, I'm okay with the Chevrolet. I, I know everybody says that that review that we did was very, very biased, and it is, but um, I, I think that that is a direct representation of they're doing this out of, um, because they're scared instead of, you know, doing it out of strength. You know, when the F-150 went to the all aluminum, they did it at a time that they didn't have to. They were already the number one selling truck. They didn't have to actually move it to aluminum. They could have stayed, you know, the steel and everything would have been fine. But they made that move because that's what they thought was actually um, was the best thing for, for the company itself. Uh, so how does the ride on the 2019 Raptor compare to the 2018? Uh, I'm not jumping them, so it's not that big of a difference. Uh, from what I can tell, it's a little more stiff than the previous. Um, which I don't like that. I like the floaty that the Raptor has uh, or has had. 
Uh, but that's just my two cents. Um, any other questions that you guys have? And, and how are we doing on time? And I, I know that some of you guys got started on this video 20 minutes ago when we first got on. I ain't got nothing to do until I go to work tomorrow. So if you guys continue to have questions, uh, you know, I'm, I don't need to go anywhere, but, uh, but I don't want to sit here and just babble on. I want this to be like a good conversation between us. Um, let's see here. Do you like your new truck with the 20, the 20, uh, Excuse me. Do you like your new truck to the 2017? Do you miss the older six-speed automatic, or do you like the 10-speed more? So my truck is still the 2017 model, um, which I would take you out there and show it to you. It's in the driveway, but it's really dark outside, uh, so I wouldn't be able to show it to you very well. Uh, and I did add a new little component to it that I'm really excited to show you guys on the channel. Uh, so make sure I know you guys are if you're watching this, you're probably subscribed, but. Um, I've got a very, very cool mod that I did to my 2017, which does have the six-speed manual or automatic transmission. So there you go. Uh, Ranger Raptor, question mark, is what David asked. You can bet your butt it's coming. It's already across the seas. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't do it in, in America, especially with how powerful and popular the Raptor has been uh, on the F-150 side. Uh, let's see here. Corey writes, uh, any key dates for the updates on the 2020 F-250 in 7.3? Um, so we have been ordering 19 Super Duties for quite some time now. And the good news is it's not a massive overhaul as far as the, uh, options go. It looks, so it would surprise me if you start, start us in the middle of the year. That's my thought process. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Dark Knight, right? What What do you think of the F one fifty diesel? Is it selling as well as as you thought? Uh, I noticed the price is dropping locally, so that's a great question. Uh, I I never expected the F one fifty diesel to be a high seller. I expected it to be very very low volume, and um, they actually produced a, a lot more of those diesels than I thought they were. Um, it's a good engine. I don't have any any um, complaints on it. But the problem is they're only making it available on some of the most ultra high-end trim levels. Platinums, King Ranches, Loaded Up Larry, it's that kind of a thing. And so when you make that shift, it's just, you're almost pricing yourself out of the market, if that makes any sense. Um, let's see here. So uh, Joel L. writes, is there any information as to whether the Akati's opposed piston engine will be coming to Ford Series at all? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I'll tell you if I know something, and I'll tell you if I don't know something, I have no clue the answer to that question. Um, let's see here. So uh, is everything about, uh, so Hammer uh, WDE writes, uh, is everything about off-road or are there good suspension upgrades for on-road? It depends on what you're wanting to do on-road. Uh, some people claim that the Raptor is one of the better riding on-road vehicles, and the simple reason is, is because the suspension uh, can soak up so many of the bumps on the uh, interstate. So uh, anytime you do like a, a, a high-end coilover system, even if you're just swapping over the coilovers, it's going to make it ride a little bit better, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, what other questions do we have? Uh, what kind of markup will you have on the new GT500, and how many will you get? Um, you know, the, on that car, it's one of those things that we have such a big database of customers on the GT500 that we will probably just send an email to those guys and say, hey, here's the allocation that we have. Um, if you want it, reach out to us. And, and the problem you're going to have is you're going to have probably about 20 or 30 legitimate buyers to every one chassis that you can actually get your hands on. Um, and so it, at that point, it's just a supply demand. And what we'll probably do is kind of like a bidding system, just whoever wants the car, just like at an, uh, you know, Mecham car auction or Barrett Jackson, the high bidder wins the car uh, as crazy as that sounds. Um, but it's just supply demand at that time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do you know if any, if Ford has any fixes for the freezing handles on the 2016 trucks, the back handles freeze open while, uh, when I open the door? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I spend most of my time on the sales side of the dealership. Um, I do know that um, the last time we had some door latch issues on like the Mustangs, it was a disaster before we actually had fixes for them because uh, they have to re-engineer a correct fix on that. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's, that's a great question. I wish I had a better answer for you. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions that we have? Uh, Jonathan writes, do you think Ford should put more diesel in small trucks and SUVs overseas? 
So um, that is a, I personally love diesels in the big trucks because you can so much power out of them so easily. Um, and you can do that same thing you for fuel efficiency here, but I think there's better ways to get fuel efficiencies. I think that smaller engines with that are gas, um, they're going to be cleaner. And I just, I'm, I'm a big gas guy. Uh, I'm not that much of a deep, uh, but anyway, um, I wish that, I hope that answers the question. Uh, let's see here. What other kind of questions do you have? Uh, Nicholas uh, uh, wrote, are you in Hoover or in Bessemer? We actually are the Ford dealership in uh, Bessemer, Alabama called Town & Country Ford. And that's where we got our name, Town & Country TV. It was just a spinoff of the name of the dealership. Uh, but it's one of those things that, um, you know, we've never used our channel to try and sell stuff. Actually, I take that back. We did in the very beginning. And then we realized nobody wants to listen to that garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so now we just talk about cool stuff that we get that we're blessed to see and hey there you go that's kind of that uh let's see here any other questions that you guys have leave them now we'll probably go ahead and start to wrap up uh this live view so uh let's see here uh so jonathan writes what are a few anticipations for the next few years so uh my next few anticipations um I'm excited, and I know this is primarily like a truck channel, but uh, I'm primarily excited about, you know what, I just realized y'all have been looking at this stupid award the whole time. Let's swap it up. There you go. Y'all can see me for a little bit. Uh, but uh, some of my expectations for this upcoming year, or next coming years, uh, the Bronco I think is going to be huge. Uh, I think that you're going to have a smaller sized Bronco that we did a video on. Um, that uh, I'm going to call it the Bronco 2. Right now it's not named, but um, I think that's going to be a very big seller because of the price point. I think that the the real Bronco that everybody's excited about, I think Ford's going to know how popular that thing is and they're going to price it to where they're making plenty of money on it. And, uh, and I think you're going to have this Bronco 2 as your switch unit, uh, you know, what some people in the car business call a switch unit. You get there and then they try and switch you to something else because the payment's too much, that kind of a thing. Um, so I'm thinking that the, uh, the Bronco 2 is going to be a huge car. I'm really excited about this new Escape uh, and this new Explorer as well. I just, it's nice to see that Ford is um, refreshing all of their, uh, their, their vehicles because there for a long time, the Escape's gotten old. The Explorer got old. Um, the Expedition, I mean, it was like 18 years before it actually got uh, refreshed. So uh, so Zane writes, do y'all sell the SCA Performance wheels or are they only available on the SCA Edition F-Series trucks? Uh, if you go to SCAPerformance.com, I think you have the ability to uh, to purchase their wheels directly. Uh, has nothing to do with uh, We don't actually sell the wheels, but I think SCA Performance does. So that, that's a good question. Um, let's see here. Do you have to have a degree to... Depending on what you want, I don't think we require a degree for anything. You want the service manager, the parts manager, you know, and that you we we also value uh, uh, experience. In fact, a couple of my guys, a couple of my top guys, don't. Are you still with me? All right, I think my Wi-Fi just kicked out on me. Hopefully, you guys are still with me. If you are, put some chats down there. Um, but uh, you there? Hopefully, you're still there. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, Rivian electric trucks uh, truck impacts the Ford uh, sales. What happened to the Ford GT application? So Jerry, to answer your question about the Ford GT application, we still have not heard back from Ford Motor Company. Uh, it's slim pickings. Uh, I'm not expecting to get the car uh, in full transparency, uh, but hopefully with some of the connections that we have and hopefully some of you guys, you don't realize this, but y'all are a huge connection for hopefully having the opportunity to get that car. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it's huge. We still have a chance there. Uh, someone said about the dealership, no, you don't have to have a degree and minimum age requirements 19. Uh, in most of the jobs though, you have to be 21. So it just depends on which job you're, you're applying for. So, uh, hopefully you guys can still see me. No problem as far as this. Oh, and Hey, look at this a little Shelby shirt. <laughs> Got to represent the Ford brand. Even when you're off of work, right? <laughs> 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see if you guys have any other questions. Uh, so uh, Ryan uh, says, do you sell any Tuscany trucks? No, we have had the opportunity, but we have decided um, not to. Um, we don't want to crowd. Uh, the real reason is not because it's not a good product or it's a bad product or a good product, but we just, we've got Roush Performance. We have um, Southern Comfort. And then we're also starting to do uh, some of the stuff in-house as well. So very, very cool stuff. Uh, we just didn't want to just oversaturate our dealership with multiple different brands. Uh, so Chris writes, what are your thoughts on the new Ford crossover replacing the Focus Fiesta Infusion? That is a phenomenal question. So um, when the, the news first came out that Ford was going to ax the cars completely, I got real scared. And not because people want cars, because I knew people didn't want cars. But the real reason is, is because most of the people that buy a Fiesta is, is because they cannot afford another option. And, and I don't want to sound insensitive when I say that, uh, but they, they may come in wanting an Escape or an Edge or an Explorer, but they can't afford it. And so when they start looking at their budget options, they're like, okay, well, I fit better with the Fiesta. Um, then I realized that Ford is coming out with a lot of other vehicles to replace the Fiesta, the Focus and the Fusion, and they're doing that by um, by coming out with things like the Echo Sport, which has been a really good seller, really good price point. It's an SUV, but it's sized like a Fiesta. It's easy to get around in, and it's inexpensive. Um, so I'm not nearly as worried about it as I was, you know, six months ago. So um, let's see here. Dark Knight writes uh, thoughts of an elect all electric uh, truck coming to the market in 2020 and its effect on the F-150 market. So uh, the Rivian truck, uh, I think the tech. It's just kind of like Tesla. Uh, I love technology. Uh, I really, really do. And I love what they're trying to do. I think the truck itself is ugly. That's just personal preference. Um, I'm curious to see how Ford Motor Company will put their all-electric F-150 in play as well. Because as I've said earlier in this live video, the Ford Motor Company is also coming out with their own all-electric F-150. That has been confirmed by the CEO uh, Oren, oh man, thank you for the super chat. Uh, he just dropped 20 bucks, so that way he's now on the super chat. So, dude, if you got any questions, please hook us up. Let us know. I'm happy to help you. Um, thank you very, very much for, for the gift. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, let's see here. What are the car channels that uh, you watch? Ooh, look at that question. That is phenomenal. Okay, so the car related YouTube ch uh, channels that I watch, who doesn't watch Donut Media? Uh, they're phenomenal. Love the the um, the hilarity of it. Um, uh, Vin Wiki, I love uh, Vin Wiki. Uh, they're you know in Georgia. We're in Alabama, so it's close. Uh, maybe one day we could actually meet up with those guys. Um, if you're watching this video, by the way, hit us up. <laughs> I would love to uh, connect and maybe do a collaboration there. Uh, that dude in blue uh, was one of my original. Um, not I wouldn't say idols, but. Uh, he was definitely one of the first guys that I was like, this dude loves Ford. He's making a living on YouTube and I don't make my living on YouTube. I make my living at the dealership. And that's the reason I can't dedicate as much time and effort and energy as I'd like to in this channel. Um, but, uh, that dude in blue is fantastic. Uh, who does not watch Doug DeMiro? Um, I love his unique look on those car, on those cars that he looks at. Um, I'm trying to think of, um, uh, oh, here's another one. It's not car related specifically, but it is a very good channel that features a cool trucks and cool cars. And that's Joe Knows Best. Um, I think that's the name of his handle um, on, on YouTube, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, very, very good channel. Uh, so let's see here. Nick writes, what do you think about the Focus and the dual clutch? I know that they're going away. have had problems in the past. <coughs> Sorry, after 35 minutes of talking, I might need to go grab a water. Uh, but um, uh, dealers seem to be discounting them, and I was wondering uh, if they are good cars. So the thing about, well, excuse me one second while I grab this water. Uh, so the thing about these uh, Focuses is, yes, the, uh, the dual clutch transmission started out terrible. Um, they were absolutely awful. And um, they have gone through so many iterations of that. It has gotten better, but it's still not perfect. Um, I, I'm curious to see how, 
Uh, they're going to do this with the all, all new GT500 is going to have a dual clutch transmission. I know it's a totally different one, but um, the Focus itself, it, I prefer the 1.0. Sorry about that. So I prefer the 1.0 EcoBoost uh, in the Focus, and the reason for that is because it comes with a six-speed normal transmission without the dual clutch. So if you're going to get a Focus, that's a great way to go about it is to get one with the uh, uh, with that 1.0 uh, EcoBoost. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Alexander says, yes, TF oh, yeah, uh, uh, the fast lane truck, that's a good channel to watch as well. So I, I did not mean to forget about those guys, but they uh, I've never had a chance to meet them in person, but uh, I do like the content that they put out. All right. And uh, so hopefully you guys uh, have enjoyed this video. Um, I know I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And once again, um, I just wanted to say, a huge thank you. Uh, let's see here. It looks like there's, oh my goodness, uh, all of a sudden a string of questions. Uh, like I said, I don't have anything to do. I just wanted to uh, give you guys a question and answer, give you an opportunity. As again, we, you know, we hit 100,000 subscribers. It's because of you guys. And so I wanted to give you all an opportunity to ask any kind of questions that you ever could have thought of asking. Um, so, uh, J2J wrote, Bullup, do you have a markup? No, the last two that we sold, sold at a discount, uh, because they were two very good customers of ours. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's phenomenal. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Super Speeders Rob, that's, a, that's another good channel. Here's my thing is, is I, I'm not only just like a junkie for YouTube on trying to put as much content on there as I could, uh, but I also consume a lot of automotive content. Like a lot of people, a lot of my coworkers, they make fun of me because instead of going home and watching the the, the basketball game or the baseball game, um, I'll go home and watch YouTube videos about cars after I've been around cars for 12 hours at work. So I, I know I'm, I've got problems. Um, and then uh, Excalibur, Excalibur Performance, great to have you on the live feed, man. Um, if you guys don't know, Excalibur is absolutely killing the Instagram game. You need to hop off here once this video is done and go see his Instagram. Uh, all of my inspiration from Instagram primarily comes from him. So, uh, fantastic stuff there. Again, I'm sorry I'm drinking on the video, but it's live and I've been yapping for 40 minutes. Hard to believe that, but um, let's see here. Anytime I have a question about F-Series trucks, I watch your stuff and they're answered. Thank man, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, if not, I guess we can start uh, wrapping this thing up. I'm just kind of flipping through some of these. Uh, man, uh, Orange G, I, I appreciate you very, very much. Again, thank you for that super chat. That, that is a, um, if you guys don't know, you have the ability to do a, what a, basically a donation or a, a super chat and that basically gets your comment guaranteed up at the top and we appreciate him for doing that you didn't have to do that that's not why we do these videos but um let's see here malachi uh writes uh what is your favorite sea truck um my favorite sea truck that we've ever done is actually uh one that uh, a dentist in atlanta is driving right now it's a white lifted raptor uh with a four inch lift kit 37 inch nittos uh, 20 inch Southern Comfort wheels and absolutely beautiful. Uh, so yeah, that's that's probably my favorite Southern Comfort truck because uh, I love white trucks. Even though I'm right, driving a red F-150 right now, white on black is my favorite. But um, oh, dude, uh, W S V W S A I phone uh, with another with another super chat, man. Thank you very very much. Uh, any 1.0 focuses on the lot? with an automatic transmission. Uh, we actually have a couple of uh, those focuses that are currently in what Ford calls their Ford Courtesy Transportation Program. It's basically a demo. We have to put 2,000 miles on them and then we can sell them still as a brand new vehicle. So I don't, I can't sell it right now, but yes, I've got six or seven of them, uh, but I have to wait until they get 2,000 miles on them when uh, our service customers that are getting oil changes done, they put 2,000 miles on it, then we can go from there. Uh, so, uh, WSA, excuse me, VWSAI phone, uh, right? How hard is it to buy a car out of state? Um, so without getting too technical in the video, it's actually really easy as long as you're dealing with a dealership that is 
easy to deal with. Um, we like to think we are because we sell so much stuff out of state. Um, what you basically need to do is know what you're getting and make sure you get full details on what you're getting, uh, agree on the price. And then from that point, uh, basically you can just put a deposit on the vehicle. And then if you're wanting it shipped to you, um, we can help you schedule the, the shipping. Uh, or if you wanted to fly into the Birmingham airport, drive it back, you can, you can do that as well. Um, but, uh, the, the paperwork works the exact same way, uh, that kind of a thing. Dude, there's another super chat. Thank you very, very much. Guys, y'all don't have to do this. We're not doing this for the super chats, but we appreciate the, the donations that you guys do, man. Um, let's see here. Uh, Soy Hernandez says, how do you fix the black screen on the radio on the F-150? Uh, so if you have that issue, a couple things. Make sure that you're running the most up-to-date software version of the Sync 3 system or my Ford Touch, either one. Uh, if that does not work, what you want to do is what I call, it's not the right terminology, but I call it a hard reset. Unplug the battery from the, the post, or pl unplug the post from the battery, leave it off for 45 minutes to an hour. As crazy as this seems, is I've, I've seen it fix it um, when it was an hour long, but when it was 20 minutes long, it, it didn't fix it. So uh, make sure that you completely wipe the system clean. Now, if that doesn't fix it, you might have a bad sync module. And at that point, there's nothing you can do but just pay for it. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. What other kind of questions y'all have? Uh, shifting hard 10 speed Lariat from fourth to fifth is this normal? Any recalls on that action? So Ford's official response to that is they basically say that um, the transmission is built very different and they say that that is kind of characteristic in that the um, the transmission is designed to holy smokes Manuel Lopez with a uh, <laughs> with a five dollar super chat and he says get some tacos after that I'm going straight to Taco Bell I promise you <laughs> that is phenomenal Dude, thank you. Dark Knight, 20 bucks. Man, you did not have to do that. I appreciate it. Uh, I got to read that super chat for just a second. Cheers from Ohio. This may be the only thing that Texas and Ohio State fans can agree on. My final question, what do you think of certified pre-owned vehicles? With the internet changing and negotiation process, is it worth it anymore? So the main thing that I like certified pre-owned vehicles for is that they have to go through a certain number of checklists and you get uh, a, a, an automatic warranty without having to pay for it. So in some situations, you're buying a used car and you say, hey, I want to buy this used car, but if I want to buy it, I have to pay for the extended warranty. Well, if the warranty is $2,000, to do a full wrap on the warranty, you have the ability to, when it's a certified pre-owned, that it automatically has the powertrain components of that automatically built into uh, the cost of that certified pre-owned. So you don't technically have to pay as much for the extended warranty, if that makes any sense. I hope that does. Um, you know, and I don't think that the certified pre-owns are worth it in the form of, of, a, of negotiating, but I think it's worth it in the, in regards with, um, uh, I think it's worth it in the regards of, uh, the quality of the vehicle and the, the service work of that vehicle. Um, Donald Boyd with a, another super chat, dude, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations for the hundred thousand. Can you add remote start and backup sensors to the 2016 Focus SE hatchback? Um, so you can add a remote start, no problem. Uh, it's not going to be in the same key fob. Uh, it'll be a separate key uh, if you're going to go with the forward route. And then uh, the backup sensors can be added as well. Um, that, I think, is probably going to have to be an aftermarket deal. But for 99% of the people who get in your car, they would never know that it's not a factory option. Uh, so that's a great question there. And, dude, thank you guys for the super chats. I'm... I, <laughs> That's bonkers. Um, yeah, Dark Knight, uh, good for you. Got to agree, Mitchell's the best. Dude, uh, no, y'all are. Y'all are. This. I, I wish I could give this to you guys. Actually, no, I don't. I want to keep it. But <laughs> for anybody that wants to come to the dealership, I, I, I want to shake your hand and you know hug your neck and thank you for helping us get this award because this truly means more than I can even imagine to you for you guys. Uh, so let's see here. Ryan Edwards writes, uh, information on the 2011, 2013 F-150 recall and the transmission, uh, changing from, uh, I'm actually not aware of that recall. Uh, it's not to say that it doesn't exist. I'm just not aware of it. And, 
Um, I like to think I know a lot about the Ford product, but I don't know that answer to that question. I'm so sorry. Um, is, is the lifted F1, so Mike uh, writes, uh, is the lifted F-150 too big for a new driver? Um, you just need to drive one first. <laughs> Uh, and, and it also depends on where you live. So driving is not the concern, it's parking it. And, uh, you know, when you do lift the truck, sometimes it does uh, cut into your turning radius. And so just know that before you do it. So just very, very good stuff there. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, w, uh, VWSA iPhone. And I, I'm going to need to learn how to say this with all these super chats that you don't... <laughs> Uh, but he wrote, uh, I'd called you a few months back about the carbon buildup on the 2.7. You're very nice about it. Told me not to worry about it. Thanks again for that, dude, anytime. Um, like I said, we're not in this YouTube game to just try and sell cars. And then if you don't buy one, just screw you and go away. We want to honestly help. We, we have this weird philosophy that if we just help enough people, we don't have to worry about selling cars and making money. It'll happen naturally. So that's kind of our, our thought process there. Uh, Bluebird uh, writes, uh, idea, I have a subscriber wall at the dealership, and it can be signed by the viewers. Dude, that is a phenomenal idea. Um, I don't know if I can get my boss to do that because he's spending a lot of money on this re <laughs> on this renovation, but I like that idea. And maybe if it's a small piece of the wall, we can expand it over time, um, but uh, but I really, really like that idea. Um, that I'm gonna have to ask him about that tomorrow. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much. We're we're at 46 minutes, and I know some of y'all probably got to go to work tomorrow. Um, it's, and I know probably some of your your, your spouses, your your friends, are like why why are you still watching 46 minutes later? But um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Um, this I'm telling you, man. Th this is. This is wonderful, and it's not because of anything that I did. Uh, it's not because of anything but you guys and a lot of Josh Vanderberg having to put up with me with the videos and editing the videos and cutting the videos. So once again, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody. Um, as, as weird and goofy as this is, I love every one of you guys. I feel like you're a part of my family, even though I may not have had a chance to meet you yet. Um, so anyways, y'all get to bed we'll holler at you later. And if you need anything else, you know where to hit us up, uh, hit me up on Instagram. I, I follow that and check it all the time. Uh, the handle is uh, Mitchell S Watts. Thank you guys. Y'all have a good night.